Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to show you how to update your multi-protocol module. I'm Jeff with Titan FPV and you're going to acquire some knowledge today. First off guys, if you're not already subscribed, stop what you're doing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload all my new content. This tutorial is for the iRange X IRX4 Lite but it may work with your other external multi-protocol module. You may have gotten a notification on your radio when you're setting up your model that you need to update your multi-protocol module. And you've probably seen videos that you can update it through HTX or OpenTX, but that's not the case with these external modules, uh, at least initially. Uh, a lot of them ship without a bootloader, this one included. You have to flash it via Flash Multi on your Mac, PC, or Linux computer. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to do this in Windows, because I found it's the easiest process to do, and it has a GUI or a graphical user interface, and you don't have to do it via command line. So you just pretty much download the Flash Multi application, install the drivers, flash the bootloader, and then you're gonna to update to the latest version that works for your module. All right, we need to check what firmware version we're running on the multi-protocol module. Welcome to HTX. Pleasure warning. We can do this by going into the uh, model. As you see, it's the status, it's telling you what version. So we're running 1.3.2.6.1, and then the channel order for the module is AETR. That's what it's expecting. All right, we're gonna head over to multi-module.org. I'll post that link in the video description. And we're gonna scroll down here on the left side and find the firmware updates. This just shows you how to check the version on your radio. We've already gone over that. And this explains the update process. First off, we're gonna download the firmware files. This just tells you how the naming should be expected, but there's a quick drop down that makes the process a lot easier to download the one for your specific module. So you're just gonna click the drop down and select your module. In this case, it's going to be the iRange X, X IRX4 Lite. And then we're going to go over to the right hand side. We got the latest version, which is what we want. It is the STM32 4 in 1 chip. All right, the radio type, we are running Edge TX. So we'll select the first one for serial. The channel order, as I stated earlier, is AETR. And you're only going to have the one option down there for the most recent firmware version. We're going to download that. If you need to download the Lua script, you can download that as well. But we're just going to download the latest firmware version. All right, we're gonna hop over to the update methods. There's a few different ways you can update. Uh, once you've updated the bootloader, you can flash it from the radio, but this is the first time that I've flashed this module. So we're gonna need a download of Flash Multi. It's a free tool that you can download uh, with a uh, GUI for Windows. And then we're gonna scroll down and grab the most recent version. Now, uh, Flash Multi uh, version.50, uh, you'll have to do an extra step, but we can disregard that because we are gonna be downloading version 0.6.1. And you're gonna download the zip file 
and then we'll go ahead and open that up and extract that. All right, so after you've got it installed, you're going to click on Advanced Actions and you're going to install the USB drivers with the module plugged in. All right, let's go ahead and extract the zip file. All right, let's locate the application and open it up. It's the executable file, the flash multi. Now that we've got the application opened, we want to click on advanced and then actions and install the USB drivers. Now you want to do this while the module is connected. And now, once your USB drivers are installed and you've selected the DFU device, which is going to be your module, you may think it's time to select the firmware file so you can go ahead and flash it. But let's see what happens. All right, it's reading the module, the current version. And when we want to go ahead and hit flash, or I'm sorry, when we want to hit write module. You're prompted with a message that's saying uh, it was compiled with that USB serial support, so you need to update the bootloader before proceeding. So that's the next step. Now, if you've got an internal module, you don't have to worry about this, but we don't. So we have further action. There's a new bootloader. So you see where it says if you have a Jumper 4-in-1, iRangeX, IR4X, or any other STM32 module with a USB port, then we need to flash the new bootloader. We don't have to manually tell Flash Multi to use the new bootloader because we're on version 0.6.1. That's only on if you're on 5.x or below. So let's hop back over to Flash Multi. All right, we're going to click on the serial port drop down and select the DFU device. Then we're going to go to Advanced, click on Actions, and we're going to flash the module bootloader. Now it's going to give us a warning saying that you need to leave the red line off for about five seconds. Uh, if you don't do that, you could potentially brick the module, so just want to make sure you pay attention. On the website it says 2, but on Flash Multi it says 5. Now I got an error message, uh, and pretty much it was unsuccessful the first time. Once you hit the Flash bootloader, you're going to have to unplug the module, then quickly plug it back in, and then it will recognize and flash, as you'll see here in a second. All right, let's try that again. All right, now here's the point that we need to go ahead and unplug the module and plug it back in. And then it's going to be able to flash the bootloader successfully. And we got it updated. So now the next step is just to update the firmware on the module and plug it back in our radio and we'll be all set. This is where you want to wait five seconds after the LED is turned red before disconnecting USB. We've waited the five seconds and reconnected. Let's select our DFU device and then we're going to select our firmware file to flash.
and then we're going to hit write module. The warning is normal. We've already flashed the bootloader, so you can just hit OK. All right, looks like it was updated successfully. We can now disconnect and reconnect and verify the firmware version. Looks like we're all good. Let's check the radio to make sure that the module firmware has been updated and the notification to update is gone. All right, looks like we are on the current firmware and there's no longer a message to update. I hope this video was informative for you guys. Remember, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell, and I'll be uploading more content uh, to the channel. So, if, as always, if you got questions, post them down in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.